Hey, how are you? Press one ball. Good boy. Okay, today I want to talk about something called Hamachandra numbers. And Hamachandra was an Indian mathematician. And in India, in the Indian language, uh, they have long syllables and short syllables. And Hamachandra wanted to know if a sentence was going to have a certain length of time in it, because it would take to say it, how many different ways could you have a sentence like that? Like he said, the shortest possible sentence would just be one word and the syllable is only a short syllable, not a long syllable. So the Hamachandra said there's only one way of doing that using long and short syllables. But if you consider writing a sentence and you said the total sentence is going to be twice as long as that. In other words, here Frosty, have a bone. Then there are actually two ways to do it. You could have one sentence that has two short syllables, or you could have a sentence that has one long syllable. So in this, I'm using these Legos, and the short syllable is yellow, and the long syllable is red. So right here, I have two sentences. Uh, one of them has two short syllables, one of them has one long syllable, but they both have the same length. The total length is two units of time. These are the only two ways that you can use long and short syllables to get two units of time. Um, so the first Hamachandra number is equal to one, because that's that. What's that's what that's supposed to be. And um, the second Hamachandra number equal to 2. That's the number of sentences you can make that have a total duration of 2. Good boy, Frosty. Now, if you wanted to say how many can I make that have a total duration of 3, well, I'm just going to put it on this board here. Yeah, Frosty likes these on the charger. Good. Okay, so one way is you could have three short syllables. That's certainly one way. Another way would be to have one long syllable followed by a short syllable. And then the only other way would be to have a uh, short syllable followed by a long syllable. So Hamachandra said, the third Hamachandra number shall be three, and three shall be the third Hamachandra number. Namachandra number. Okay? And then Namachandra wanted to find these for larger and larger numbers, uh, lengths of sentences. And one thing that Namachandra noticed, he said, just take a look here at the, uh, the, the sentences that have a total length of three. He said, I can look at this in a certain way. Each of the sentences has to end in either a short syllable like the first two sentences, or it has to end in a long syllable, like the last one. If you consider all of those that end with a short syllable, that means that what precedes them should be exactly all of those Hamachandra numbers of one less length. In other words, what's in front of that, these are exactly the same as that. And Hemachandra also said, if you look at the ones that end in a long syllable, well, what comes before that should be exactly the total number of sentences that occurred uh, that had only a length of one, let's say, or two Hemachandra numbers before. So using this logic, for example, I couldn't make the, um, the fourth Hemachandra number. I could just say, if it's going to end in a short one, I'll put all the short ones that end in the short ones first. He said the way to get all the ones that will end in a short one is to just take the number of the Hamachandra previous. 
which is to say I could take all of these three uh, and I could end them with a short and that would make a valid Hamiltonian number that had a total length of four. So that would be one. This would be another one. This would be another one. And of course, what I, all I did was I just took this and I just put it in there. And then he said, okay, now, uh, he said also some of the ones that have a total length of four might end with a long. And the number that will end with a long will be the Hamachandra number, which is two before. I can take every one that occurs there two before. And I can follow it by a long syllable. And so, you see then that you get five. The fourth Hamachandra number shall be five. And then, well now I've, I've run out of space. And I've also run out of these uh, syllables. But Hamachandra said he saw the pattern. And he said if I wanted to make the total number that had a length of five, not four, but one more than this, five, first I would take all of them that ended in four, and I just add a short syllable. Then I take all of them that I had a length of three and I'd end it with a long syllable, which is to say I would take f five plus three to make eight total. The next number is going to be eight. And then Hamachandra came up with the general pattern that the nth Hamachandra number is equal to the sum of the Hamachandra numbers of one less length plus the Hamachandra numbers of n of, of two lengths in length. And this is what he came up with. Now, curiously enough, you might notice these are the exact same numbers that Fibonacci came up with. Only Fibonacci came up with them much, much, well, much later. He came up with them in the 1200s, and uh, Hamachandra came up with these numbers in the 1100s. It might have been, um, I don't know, 50 or 100 years earlier. But we, in the West, don't call them the Hamachandra numbers. We call them the Fibonacci numbers, but actually, they're really the Hamachandra numbers. And um, so I just wanted to point that out. These, of course, now, it's a, it was a totally, totally different sort of a problem he was trying to solve. This had to do with writing sentences. How many different types of sentences? Because when writers write certain types of literature, they like to write in a certain style. Uh, because what will happen is when you read it, it has a certain rhythm to it. And that rhythm is something that the uh, writer uses to create a certain emotion or sensation when you're reading that. And that, that's part of, it's not just the words, but it's also the way they sound. That's a little bit like poetry uh, or classical literature. Uh, and it's called the meter, uh, what meter it's written in. Anyway, so I thought that would be interesting for all of those who are interested in the uh, history of India, particularly how uh, Indian mathematics, uh, and in this case how Indian mathematics uh, predates uh, the Western mathematics. Uh, so that's all.